Animation is an integral part of storytelling and can make or break an experience. However, in an immersive environment, motion sickness is a very common negative side effect of animation. This can include a feeling of seasickness, headaches, general nausea, dizziness, vertigo, or even in some cases, vomiting. And this happens when there's a mismatch between what's being seen and what's being felt. Or in other words, your eyes perceive that you're moving, but your body doesn't feel any motion. With that in mind, how can we add animation to an experience without making people sick. In this video, I'll be diving a little deeper into animation in XR, so let's go ahead and get started. As I've mentioned in my best practices article, motion is a very important aspect of XR experiences since it can be used to enhance interaction, support the narrative, and direct people where to look. However, if there are too many elements moving at once, it can get distracting and confusing and even nauseating very quickly. That's because we're no longer looking at a 2D screen with a limited screen size. The 360 degree space around us is now the canvas and motion can happen anywhere, not just directly in front of us in that limited space. That means there are going to be some new best practices to keep in mind when adding animations to your head mounted XR experiences. Large objects moving through space or in the periphery can induce motion sickness just like it would if the whole world were moving. So you're going to need to use care with the scale of motion within the space. People can get easily distracted by animated objects, so you'll also want to be careful with the amount of animation you're using within the environment to make sure people are able to focus on the content without being distracted by unnecessary motion. Colliding objects can also be jarring and disorienting besides just being distracting, so design all of your animations within the experience with intent. Good examples Examples of intent include interaction feedback, such as hovers, color transitions, and other micro interactions that will let them know they're successfully or unsuccessfully interacting with objects. Intentional use of animation also includes using motion and NPC behaviors to direct attention. Don't pan or zoom the environment for people as this can be disorienting and has a high risk of causing motion sickness. And animation on glowing or outlined objects can also be used to ensure interactive elements are clearly distinguished from those that aren't. If you would like to continue getting free content like this, be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you have a moment, comment in the videos. That will really help me know what's important to you as I create more content. Now on to the examples. I know I mention moss a lot, but there's a good reason. There's motion throughout the environment, but they follow the rule that less is more. There is enough motion to make the world feel alive, but not so much that it's overwhelming you. The larger motions are carefully reserved only to grab your attention and progress the story. They also cleverly use Quill's body language to direct your attention for where to look at certain points in the story. As the story progresses, they use a subtle ghosted controller to demonstrate which button to use for what interaction. And the objects you can manipulate directly have a nice highlight to distinguish them from the rest of the world. Another great example to study is Oculus First Contact. This experience is free on the Oculus, or now Meta, platform for all of their headsets. Like with Moss, the robot uses body language to communicate with you, direct you where to look, and indicate what you should do. Its communication is then reinforced with glowing elements and smaller animations on the objects you should be interacting with. Be sure to pay close attention to how they use micro animations to reinforce interactions and indicate success. I highly I encourage you to check out both of these experiences for yourselves. I've included the links below in the show notes. You can also see more examples of how other people have solved this problem by checking out the pattern library on my website. The link is in the show notes. So for a quick recap, use scale and colliding objects with care. Use animation intentionally as a form of feedback. Remember to keep motion sickness in mind when creating animations. Don't ignore real world physics when creating virtual world animations. Animations. And don't overwhelm people with too many elements moving at once. I'd like to say thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. It really does mean a lot and makes a big difference. Creating this content takes a lot of time, money, and effort. So your support helps me to continue creating educational content like this. Becoming a patron also gives you access to our private Discord server, gives you early access to these videos, and gives you access to exclusive content not available anywhere else. If you'd like to become a patron, check out the link tree in the show notes. Tango.
Quality base here. 